Hello, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the three etudes written by Nicholas Roslavets, a composer that up until today I've never heard of. So this piece, of course, has three studies, and the third one is titled Berlando. It has a metronome marking of eighth note at 144, so this is a very fast piece, and uh, it's a challenging piece. It's obviously a study and does require uh, really great technique. And of course, if you look at the pitches here in the very beginning, it's difficult. Now, typical of the 20th century, this piece was written, I think, around 1914, something like that, um, has no key signature. So it only has accidentals in this movement, only sharps, flats, and naturals. Nothing in a key signature, which tells me right away that this is probably atonal. It's not in a diatonic framework. It's not in a major or minor mode. It's not, it's not modal, but it's going to be more chromatic. And in fact, if you looked at it, look at it just like the opening notes, C flat, B flat, E flat. That's a nice major chord here. Okay. Um, and, but then the next series is, so maybe these the left and right hands are divided. Sounds a little bit like one's in one key and the other's in another. Right? So we have a, a little bit of a, a split between the left and right hand. Maybe that this piece is somewhat bitonal. It could be written in, with the framework of two keys in mind. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what was going through his head. Again, I've never heard of this guy, so for now these are my just my very first impressions. As I listened to the piece and I looked at the score, it was clear that it was divided into an, an A section, which is this fast moving passage work in 30 second notes, and then a, a slower part that's more melodic. So this meno vivo, of course, a little bit slower. And then it has, again, a slower melody. So that really sounds tonal but it's against this other. And then. I like the sound of this because it's not completely atonal. It has some tonality in it. You know, these chords. I can almost see like this is a chordal, right? This one's built up of, clearly built up of fourths. So it has these other elements that are reminiscent of tonality, but it's mixing with something that's in another key. So you get this kind of um, odd effect. Oops. And that's the first measure. Second measure. I like it. Okay. I chose these two um, sections to analyze a little bit further. I'll get back to that. But let's take a look at the piece as a whole. This is the B section. It goes on for a while like this. The melody repeats, slightly varied, gets more elaborate, builds up, and then comes back down. At the end of this section, you see it has it again, moderato, somewhat moderately, so it even slows down further. And then it goes back to the A section, tempo one again more elaborate this time because you can see they added he added in some 16th notes instead of having a rest in the in the left hand now it has to add in these 16th notes so it's more complicated and i'm not going to analyze the entire thing now well, of course because of time then it goes back again to the same situation where we have and you, you can really pick this out very easily. So this is again back to the B section. This goes on for a while. Here you see the moderato again, so it slows down even further. Then it slows down and then back to the opening. So this looks very much like the A section. And in fact, hmm, I'm just gonna scroll back really quickly to the very, very beginning to see. Okay, if you remember the first measure here, because this we're gonna look at just this bit here in a couple seconds. But take a look at that C flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. So that looks like a, you know. Okay, so C flat uh, major seven, 
we can go down and take a look at what it is when we come back. So, oh yeah, it's the same. No, wait, that's the, that's the second A section. What about the third A section? I think it's, um, it's, yeah, it's the same. So it looks like it repeats, but that right hand pattern, is that, I think that it's just down an octave. Okay, so you can see the A section comes back exactly the same. So we have A, B, A, B, A. Um, a little bit like a Ritornello or maybe a Rondo with the, uh, the, it's not exactly a Rondo because it comes back to B. So it's just a regular kind of a A, B, A, B, A. Maybe like a, what would we call this? Um, like a Rondo form. Okay, I should have a name for this. I'm just not just not clicking right now. All right, so again, here's A, and then and then you get a combination. B comes back um, here at the end. So A B A. It's basically a sort of a binary form repeated three times. Okay. Um, each time, the last time, the A B section is shorter. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. Because the actual notes themselves are somewhat um, atonal and when you can put them together, like these first eight notes, I'm going to treat these as sets and see if there's any kind of relationship to these. So these four notes and these four notes, and then I'll also look at the B section, just the opening of it. And this is really just for practice purposes, for seeing how set theory works. Let's see if it tells us anything about these in the next video.